And therefore, to walk with God, there must be an agreement. There must be a, a yoking together. There must be uh, that, that fellowship. That's what Jesus said. If you want to learn to be coming, take my yoke. Be yoked with me in agreement with me. If you want to walk with God, you've got to be in agreement with God. Or you cannot walk with him. And we find that Enoch walked with God. And that's what God wants from each and every one of us. And so let's go back to Genesis and try to put a brief mention of this life into context. And uh, although we know very little about him, Enoch's faith is revealed to us in a variety of ways. I trust it's going to be a, a blessing to you because he walked with God, not just for one day, not just for 30 days. Right now I'm doing a 30 days cleanse. Hallelujah. I'm two weeks into it. I'm feeling pretty clean. Um, that's the air did. One of the hardest things I've ever did. My wife keeps giving me the stuff to drink every night. Oh, it's good. 32 ounces of that stuff. And then you've got to turn around and wash it down with 32 more ounces of stuff. Um, by the time I get done drinking all this, at the end of the day, I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's terrible. It's unbelievable. But she says it works, so I'm doing it. And I'm, Losing weight and feeling better, and it takes through the night to, to, to start feeling better by the next morning. But you you make it through that. And 30 days, I'm thinking, 30 days, this is almost impossible for me. We're also in our life groups, we're doing 30 days of one thing, one thing. We had to make one thing. I made a commitment to God. One thing to give my wife 30 minutes of undevoted, uh, 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 devoted, <laughs> devoted. Devoted to undivided attention and listen to her, to look in her eyes and talk to her. You talk about difficult. That is so difficult. Ah. Henry repent several times. It's my one thing. And I, just 30 days. Enoch did it for 300 years. He walked with God. 300 years. Isn't that Wow. No I love that. I love that about Enoch. What a consistency. What, what a commitment that he had. Enoch's faith was demonstrated in that he walked with God. Twice it says, Enoch walked with God. And what does it mean to walk with God? That term walk is used in the Bible synonymous with a person's life and how they live their life. That's what it means. He walked with God. He lived his life with God. He didn't do it alone. He didn't do it aside from God. He did life with God. Isn't that beautiful? He walked with God. You've been walking with him for how many years now? 91 years. God has. Uh, she's catching up with Enoch, I'm telling you. Don't be long. She'll be there. And, uh, 91 years. Walking with God. That was Enoch. What a, what a blessing he was. And he lived his life in a way that pleased God. But I want you to notice in the context here. It was after Methuselah was born. Enoch was 65 when he had his first child. And Enoch was born. It was after he had his first child that he began to walk with God. Then he began to walk with God. Have children. Amen. They'll test and try your faith. They'll put you through the mill. You have better walk with God if you're going to have children. It's the greatest thing you'll ever do. Because you'll need signs and wonders and miracles to live through children. I'm telling you. They will test you and try you and everything. If you don't have God to get you through it, you're not going to So he had Methuselah, like this, this little one running all over the place. He started thinking, I better get a hold of God. It's not all about me anymore. It's not about what I wanted in my occupation, in my life. Now it's about this little one. What am I? Children continue in the faith. 
I believe that with all my heart. And that was the heart of Enoch. How much you see now? There's three things I want you to see real quickly here in Enoch. First of all, in this walk, what kind of walk was it? First of all, I want to say it was a walk in light. He walked in light. For he walked with God, the Bible says. And what do we know about God? God is light. And in him, John said, there is no darkness at all. You believe that? God is perfect. He is the glorious one. There's absolutely no sin, no darkness, no error, no mistake in God. To walk with God is to walk in light. For God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. He walked in the light that He had. And it wasn't a whole lot of light. We don't know where it first came, but I would imagine that maybe He got His first little bit of light from Adam. Did you know that Adam was 600 years old? When Enoch was born, it was a small little community. I can just see Adam, uh, Enoch hearing about the first one that was ever created by God. He said, I've got to meet this guy. I don't know how far he had to travel or what he had to do. We have no record of this, but we believe he was related to uh, Adam. He was related to Adam. And uh, so he found his great, 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 the, the guy that started all of this. And can you imagine the first conversation with Adam? <laughs> hey, great, 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 great granddad. What was it like to be created out of dust? He said it was a nasty thing. Dirt everywhere. I mean, when God spoke, dust flew. And the next thing, no, poof, here I came. He said, what was it like to walk with God? In the cooling nights, it all was marvelous. We walked with God. He would tell me how. He flung the stars into the sky high, created the sun and the moon. And all the, the creation. He, 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 he told me about the constellations. and told me about how he designed it all. And how the, the heavens declared the glory of God. I walked with him in the cool of the night. And he told me how he came into existence. And how God gave him the evening. The children and children and children and children. And, and he began to tell us how it all began to come. As he spoke uh, to him, the faith in uh, and Enoch began to, to rise and began to believe there is, a, there is a power. There is somebody greater than me. And that person is God Almighty. No, he didn't understand all and everything about God. He began to walk in the light that he had. And the Bible says if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all, and sin, all sin. And I believe this in all my righteousness. And I believe this with all my heart. God gives every one of us a certain amount of light, a certain amount of understanding, a certain amount of revelation that we can understand God. He places eternity in our hearts, the Bible says, and God makes it possible for every person on the face of this earth, no matter where they're born, no matter what their circumstances or where they're at, He places within their heart a certain amount of light that tells them there is a God in heaven. What they do with that light will determine where they end up. But the path of the just, the path to believe, the path that follows those that, that, that have faith in God, the Bible says the path of the just is just a shining light that shines more and more under the perfect day. And so Steve, as we walk in the light, God gives more light and more light and more light. We're going to see this in Enoch. And he started out just talking with Adam. And I said, you know, he's talking with God. God seen him walking with Adam. And he says, I'm going to come down and meet my son face to face. And he came down and began to walk with Enoch. He began to talk with Enoch because he saw in Enoch a desire to have what Adam lost. A walk with God. That's what I want. I want what Adam lost. I want to walk with God. I want to talk with God. I want to know Him face to face. I want to hold Him and embrace Him and love Him and follow Him with all of my He walked in light. And God gives light to all of us. What you do with that light will determine where you end up. Amen. And uh, to walk in the light is to walk according to God's Word. Yes. Amen. Yes. To walk. The Bible says, The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. The Word of God, the Bible says, the entrance of, the, of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. And so we know that the light that we need from God comes by from hearing His voice. That's what it says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by 
Hallelujah. The Word of God. And that word that's used in the Word of God is not Logos, the written word. It is the, it's called Rhema in the Greek, and it's the spoken Word of God. And God wants us to walk with Him, and our faith grows, Denise, as we begin to hear God's voice. We begin to heed God's voice, not just for what we read, but for what we hear, and how God takes that written word and speaks to our heart and reveals His will to us. And I believe with all my heart that God still speaks from heaven. And those that have ears will hear, and those that have not ears to hear will never hear the voice of God. But oh, I thank God. I heard His voice when I was sitting back in a pew right where Ashley was sitting, and the Spirit of God got a hold of me and said, You're a sinner, you need to run to God. And I jumped up and I ran in the other and I got saved. The next morning, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, Why you going to Africa? You're going to Africa. Crazy. But I'll tell you, it was the voice of God. You know how it was? I know it was the voice of God. Four years later, I was in Africa. And I can't tell you, I don't have time today to tell you all that God did to make that possible. All I know is He put it in my heart, He spoke in my soul, and I'm thank God for the voice of God. It builds faith in your life. And as you walk in that light, you take it step by step and follow God with all your heart. I'm telling you, God will reveal His will to you and you'll know the purposes and the plan that God has for your life. But it's determined, it's determined for what you do with what yes. God gives to you. Yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm preaching as fast as I can to get through this. My heart is so full of, it's so full of all of this. And, uh, uh, it's just marvelous. And, and God, God revealed to Enoch you know, so many things. And we're going to come to the end of it at the end of this chapter. He revealed to them new prophecies and revelations of things that have not even come to pass yet. And he showed Enoch just a glimpse of it. And uh, we have a greater opportunity today to walk with God than Enoch did. Amen? We have more light than Enoch could have ever had. We have the entire Word of God. This whole revelation from Genesis to this, this is a, our road back to heaven. This is all about God. His purpose and His plans, everything He wants us to know about eternity and things to come and things present and, and things that are, are in this life is right here in this book. And we do not have the, 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 the respect for God enough to even open it and read it. This is the beginning of faith. When you hear the Word of God, and then God begins to speak with you, then you know you're walking with God. Hallelujah. Many, many so-called Christians go through all their entire Christian life and never, never get to know God. Never read the Word of God. Never memorize it. Never hear the voice of God. Their entire Christian life, they just go to church and go through the motions and end up as nothing but a void person at the end of this life. He walked with God in light, but he also walked in love. See, it wasn't just a discipline. It wasn't just a dedication to, to, to the Word of God and to walk in faith. It was, it was more than that. He wanted God in his life. He wanted to walk with God. He wanted to have a love relationship with Him. It was more than just going through the motions. He really wanted to walk in love. And God seen that. See, God sees the heart. And that's why God came down. Because He saw that Enoch was really wanting to have a love relationship with Him. And the moment God sees that, He will come down he will wrap his arms around you. You'll begin the greatest journey of your life. I gave my life to Jesus 50 years ago. They said it would pass away. I love him more today than I've ever loved him before. This week has been one of the most glorious weeks I've ever had in all my devotions, in all my times with God. This week has been one of the most precious, precious weeks I've had in years with the Lord. Just talking to him, walking with him. Hearing his voice, God speaking to me, God working my life, God giving me a new vision and purpose and seeing and sensing the presence of God in my life. And he has that for all and every one of us. He walked in close fellowship with God, in constant communion with him because he loved him. And the focus of Enoch's faith was his deep and abiding devotion to have a relationship with God. God. More than dedication. More than just obedience. It was a, a, a life that says, I love you and I will not do anything that displeases 
to God. Because you mean everything in the world to me. That time you fail gets the attention of God. God wants to have a love relationship with you and me. It's always been uh, amazing to me that God uh, uh, could, and she, could take us uh, and, and uh, uh, want to have a relationship with us in such a way that he called himself. And his first revelation to his people was that he was father. A father. Abba, father. He wants us to know him as father. Why? Because he, that's a love relationship. You don't know what love is until you have a kid, and then you have a kid. So, wow. You know, it's like, it's just so unbelievable. You can take I remember when they brought Sean to me for the first time. I went to their house, and, and I held Sean. My son was here, and he witness to him. He grabbed the hold of me, wouldn't let go, would he? He hugged me and held on to me, and just bouncing up and down. Imagine, he's pretty big looking. He had me going with this man. I thought he was going to burp, and I thought, I was going to burp too. And uh, it was this amazing experience. Amazing. I'm telling you. That's the relationship that God wants to have with all of us. That's why he calls himself Abba, Father, Daddy God, Daddy God. That's the kind of relationship. He'd come down with this level of saying, Adrian, I want to be your daddy. I want to love you like a daddy loves his children. I want that kind of relationship. It's a love relationship. And nothing in the world can be more precious than the love of God. God so loved the world. That he came his only begotten son. Hear me, do we know what love is? That Christ came and died to be a propitiation for our sins. Love is God. And you cannot understand love without God. But when you begin to love him, then you understand your purpose and all that God has for your life. It's a love relationship, not only with God, but it's when you after you love him, you know what happens. You just love the whole world. You know the whole world, just like Jesus. You want to see the whole world come to Jesus. You want to see every life changed. You can't be offended. You can't be hurt. I mean, you just love the world. You want them to say, they can slap you in the face and kick you, stone you to death and, and do everything in the world. You just love them. You just love the world. You want to see them saved. And you're willing to do that even unto death. It doesn't matter to you because you love the world. Like God loved the world. That's what happens. You shout with your heart with love. And I'm telling you, that's the most important thing in the world is to learn to walk in Love. Paul said it this way. Walk in love in Ephesians 5 2. As Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Hallelujah. To walk in love. See, sin separates us from God. But oh, when we come and we love God enough to repent of our sins and begin following after God, God will restore us and forgive us, and bless us, and keep us more than anything in the entire world. That is the love of God. He demonstrated his love to us. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that's what God sent his son. And that's why his son came. Because he seen Royce Roy, and he knew Royce Roy was going to hell. And he said, I'm going to give him a chance to respond to my love. And the Spirit spoke to me, and I thank God to this day. Somehow I responded to the grace of God, and my life was changed, and I suddenly came into a relationship with Him, and He began to call me son. He adopted me into His into his family, just like we've adopted a little Sean. He's not our flesh and blood, but in our spirit, we have adopted him into our family already. He's not even my adopted grandson yet, but I'm going to be saying he's my adopted grandson. Hallelujah. Because he's going to be adopted in November. He's going to be ours. We're going to hold him and love him. And like I've done with the other six of his, will be number seven that have been adopted into the family of God. And he's going to love him to death because we believe in the spirit of adoption because that's what God has done for you and I, everyone here. We've been adopted to call him Abba Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Jack was even said, I went to meet my uncle for the first time. I said, What are you talking about? He says, uh, Uncle Ryan. I said, Oh, yeah, you'll get to meet your aunt too. And Jack says, Yeah, what's her name? <laughs> Max O'Connor, who blesses me so much with this writings, he said this. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. If he had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He'd be sending flowers every spring and every sunshine, every morning of every morning. Whenever you 
want to talk. He'll be there to listen. He can live anywhere in the universe. And yet he's chosen to live in your heart. Right. Face it, friends, Max said, God is crazy about you. Right. And to reject that love is the stupidest thing you'll ever do. Amen. He loved you so much that he died on the cross. And uh, I hope you'll return that love and respond to that love and let God do it in your life. Last of all, we have to close with this. Now when you walk in light and you walk in love, that he not read, walk ready to lead. Ready to lead. How many know you're leading this old world? Yeah. How many know it? Some people don't know it, but how many know it? You are leading this world one way or the other. The only thing we don't know is when. But we are leaving, whether we're young or old, we're all going to die. To put it on the man wants to die. After that, the judgment. The only way you escape that is what Enoch became a prophecy of, and that is the rapture or the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which Enoch told us about, hallelujah, some 4,000 years ago. That's how you know it's God, because Enoch spoke it, and it was recorded 2,000 years later by Jude, and let us know that Enoch had been heard from God, the day is coming, I am going to come back for you. And I'm going to bring great judgment after I come back for you, and I, I want you to be ready. And so Enoch heard this revelation, and he knew the judgment was coming, and so he began to walk more with God. Walk more. He said he could come in any moment. He could Coming in honest with this is exactly what the word says. And, and he just began to walk, expecting Jesus to come at any time. And he walked with God, he talked with God. He got us excited that God was showing you things that were going to happen. You don't believe me? Turn your Bibles to Jude chapter, four, uh, four, Jude chapter, chapter 1. There's only one Jude. <laughs> I'll slow down now. <laughs> I want to read it to you. This is so, 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 so powerful. But he, he walked ready. To lead. I, I love this, this part here. And it says this in Jude. If I can find it. This is an Enoch, verse 14 of Jude. You go to the book of Revelation, come back one. That's Jude. It's right next to John, the Revelator. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, that's how we know it was this Enoch, prophesied of me, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his Now get that. Here's Enoch, 4,000 some years ago, saying, Get ready. If not those, so more than that, long before, more than 4,000. Who knows how many years back that was? Anyways, he prophesied. He said, Teresa, the Lord is coming with 10,000 of his angels. Be ready. Be ready. Two, four, six, five, who knows, thousands of years ago. He prophesied it's going to happen. Unbelievable. Recording the word of God. And Jude wrote this 2,000 years ago. So this is not just something new. It was written thousands of years ago. He said it's going to happen. Get yourself ready. And he goes on to say this. To execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, against God. He said, He's coming back again, and when he comes back, he's going to come back in judgment to judge this world for its ungodliness and its sin. And so some of us have this question. Why does the wicked prosper? Why do the wicked just seem to get what they get? Hey, they're going to get what they get one day. Yeah. I'm not worried about the wicked and what they're going to get and when they're going to get it. I'm worried about me getting from God what I can get from God right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that is the hope of eternal life. And I don't care if I get anything else from God. I don't care if I get houses, lands, money, or anything else with the comforts of this life. Give me a mud house and let me make heaven and I'll be the happiest guy in the world. Because that's all that matters to me. I want to make heaven. And when Jesus comes, I want to be ready. And if I die before he comes, I want to be ready. For it says, an hour, you think not, Jesus said, I will come 
And he's only come for those that are watching and praying. Only for those that are waiting and loving and loving and laboring and working and showing their faith in God. He is coming for those that walk in light, that walk in love, and that walk ready to leave this world whenever he breaks the eastern sky. And be ready. Because you don't know when you might be the next one to die. I've had funeral after funeral this last couple months. Six or seven, I can't keep track. The last one was a 35 year old boy walking up 111. Will. I knew Will was just a little boy. Got out of his car, had a flat tire, got out, started walking to his home. He was going to wait until the next morning to fix his tire. Coming over the hill while he was coming over the hill right here at 111. Fire hit him. He died. 13 days later, he died. As you, 35 years old. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Does anybody here know you're going to die? Don't know. Some of you, God didn't give you no hope. I mean, if there was no hope for you, you thought you were going to die of cancer a long time ago. And you're still here. Hallelujah. And then others think they're going to live forever. They'll be dead tomorrow. Don't know. You might be in this one. You never know. I was telling you, be ready from the time you're young to you old. Walk and be ready. Because the hour is coming. And God, in His grace and mercy, is long suffering, not willing that any should come to repentance. And how I know this is when He had His first son, God told him, told him this call your son Methuselah. The one set before the judgments. The one sent by God. To warn my people of the judgment to come. And Enoch uh, had this Methuselah. And Methuselah went on to live 969 years. But on the day that Methuselah died, do you know what happened? Study out the charts if you want to follow through. I have done it. And many other scholars have done it. What happened on the day that Methuselah died? Definitely the year. Most likely, I believe, the very day. Anyone know? Anyone know? Shut. Nine hundred and some years he preached it. He preached it. He preached it. The Lord is coming. Judgment's going to come. Judgment's going to come. Get yourself ready. And all of a sudden, Methuselah died in the rain. Begin to fall. The rain began to fall. You know how many were ready? Eight. Eight souls were saved. There are millions of people in this. Eight souls were saved. When Jesus comes again, I wonder how many will be ready. And you can't leave this church without saying, you didn't hear it? Well, this preacher, he's coming again. He's coming sooner than you think. And if he doesn't come and you die, you had better be ready. Because if you don't, this preacher can't put you in heaven. I can have a beautiful sermon. I can say, I hope they're in heaven. I pray they're in heaven. I believe they're in heaven. And when I get to heaven, I don't see them. I'll say, look, because they didn't make it. They didn't make it. I don't want you to have any doubts about me, Juanita. When you see me laying in that casket, I want you to know, otherwise we have it. He's with Jesus. <laughs> because I have learned to walk with God. To walk in light. Not that I'm perfect. Well, I tell you, when God deals with me, I'm quick to repent and ask my wife to forgive me or whoever it is. I'm going to walk in light. I want no darkness at all in my life. Amen. When I sin, when I make a mistake, I immediately say, God, forgive me. Help me, God. I'll go to the person I have to go to and repent, ask him to forgive me. I want to keep my soul clean before God. I want to walk in light. I don't want to walk in love. I want God to know every morning, every night, I love you, Jesus, more than anything in the world. And through the day, through the day, I just want to love him and worship him and adore him and let him know I love you. Because I want to be ready to leave. To leave. Amen. Live to leave. Because none of us are going to stay here. Amen. Amen. The next time I come, it's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Well, it's going to be a thousand years of ruling and reigning with him. And then the heavens and the new earth. And oh my. Hallelujah. Jeff will be one of the tallest people in heaven. I'll, I'll be able to know if Jeff made it. I'll just look out. I'll just look like that. And if I see his head, I'll say, Hallelujah. To 
me, I can laugh about it because I'm ready. If you're not ready, you need to get ready. And the only way can be that. Do it like Abel did. You've got to sacrifice. He said, Lord, I believe that one day you're going to give a sacrifice in that lamb. That lamb is going to die on the cross for my sin. And I accept you as my Savior. And Abel was changed and saved at that moment. And the moment you believe that God loves you so much that he sent his son to die in your stead for your sin and you confess your sin and you trust him and you take Jesus to be your savior so that you don't have to die in your sin. The moment you do that, you have the hope yes. of eternal life to live forever and ever and ever. The question this morning is, are you ready? Have you made your peace with God? Have you asked Christ to come into your life? Have you confessed your sin? Have you humbly said, Lord, I accept you as my Savior. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I preached my heart out to you this morning about the faith of Enoch and how he walked with God. If you're here this morning and you're not walking with God, but you'd like to begin that walk, and you'd like to begin by acknowledging that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and you'd love to accept him as your Savior, I want you to raise your hand and say, Brother Lloyd, pray for me. I will not embarrass you. I'll come to you. I'll come to you. But if you have never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life. I want you to raise your hand and say, pray for me. Would there be I've got peace in my heart. I've shared the gospel. If you walk out the door and get hit by a car, die without it. It's all yours. It's all yours. I've freed myself. I've turned you the truth. Would there be one that say, pray for me? commit to you this, your people, that God can deal with every heart here. If there's some here that know you, but they're not walking with you in light and love, and they need to, I pray you deal with their hearts that they want a closer walk with you, and they would desire to come and fellowship with you, even today around these altars, and say, Lord, draw me closer, closer to you. Do that work with grace in my life, and would cause me to be ready if you should come today. I'll thank you for that in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Now I want to talk to you. You walked in light, but you also walked in love. If you love Jesus and you want that walk with him, then Enoch had. I want you to take time before you leave. Bow your heads and if you Lord, come to these altars. Young people, come to the altar. Say, Lord, I want that walk with you. I want that. I need that walk with you. I want to commit myself to that. I want to walk with you. Not for one day, not for 30 days, not for 30 years. I want to walk with you for the rest of my life. Amen? Amen. And remember, one day, it's coming back. Amen? Let's sing. I want you to come and find a place to pray. Come and find a place to pray. My life is yours. My hope is